time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. We've had some deep philosophical conversations today before we went on the air. And so uh, we can lighten it up a little bit. And uh, most of you sat through the whole 12 weeks of turtles, uh, heard the turtles, I'm sorry. Uh, and there were 12 of them, uh, part one, two, three, and so on. And uh, what we had done with that, we put little things out there for you to have some fun with what you had to guess uh, what it was. And um, we had made it a fun thing. And I had a lot of calls uh, where people called in and wanted to know, or they would guess what we were trying to ask. And so, and I thought, well, even though we're not doing the turtles anymore, uh, which we do rounds today, but we decided to um, maybe do one more and uh, let you guess what some of the things are. And um, uh, since we had so much fun with it, and um, so Bernie's going to put some things in here today just once, and then uh, you can guess what it is, and I will um, tell you about it next week. Now, in the 90s, I had a different director, and um, we had, sometimes we used inserts from trips that I went to and things, and in a different storyline where you just would see a little here and a little here, and so what I thought I'd do, since you're really not ready to come home, you've been on this trip for 12 weeks, I thought I'd put all the mounts together for you today. And uh, all the places we've been, and we're going to start out uh, going to the Mima mounts today. And I'm going to talk to you all through it and um, let you know where I was going and what we were doing and um, look at some ancient civilizations. And um, so we'll see how that works. And uh, so come right along. We're not quite home yet. Uh, we're going to um, start out with the Mima mounts. They are in Rochester. Uh, Washington, that's between Olympia and uh, Chehalis. And, um, and most of those are Indian uh, tribes that owned this at one time or another. Now, interestingly enough, we can go anytime we want to because I'm going to talk right through it. Interestingly enough, eventually I found out that um, the Evergreen College uh, took care of of the Mima Mounts at one time. So anytime we're ready, we can roll it. And uh, the weather is good. This one, the weather is good. It's always windy wherever we go. So come right along and uh, to the Mima Mounts in Washington State. There you go. The reason it's crooked, at that time, um, I believe it was in 99, some children in Colorado had broke my camera, and I didn't realize that things was crooked. There you go, you can hear the wind. Each mound has different vegetation, oddly enough. It's a prairie that is now a park. And um, it's also the place where the Pacific Plate meets um, with, with the, I don't know which fault that is. Some people think it's an interdimension, interdimensional place. <coughs> now please note the, uh, the walkway there. There are no cracks in it whatsoever, even though this was filmed after the 6.8 earthquake at the Nisqually quake. Now, in 2005, if you go there, it has taken quite a beating. Um, looks almost like things are, things are shifting on a regular basis. And each time of the year you go there, vegetation is different, the energy is always wonderful. And uh, there's a little platform there where you can get up on it and, and look around. Then the, it gives you theories as to what they think it is. Some people think they go for holes. Of course, I don't believe that. 
You have eagles there and hawks. I would sit on the mound and uh, just relax. And that would be me trying to take a picture there. One time I was there and I had on a heart monitor. And when the test came back, they actually noticed that while I was sitting on that mound, it increased the currency and my uh, the electricity going towards my heart. So needless to say, when I need a charge, I'm heading for the Mima Mounds, and I'll sit there and just recharge my batteries. So anytime you're in this area, that would be a great place. That's what they look uh, from the air. Um, every once in a while we stop the film for you so you can see it. And um, just a wonderful experience. There's a website called My Mama Mounds. You can get a lot of information from there. You can also go to my webpage and uh, there are many articles about the different mounds. And sometimes it gets busy, and uh, I'm not really sure, but I think that has to do with the ocean floor. I'm not sure. It's part of the story, how they came about, so I don't remember. Um, but you could find that on the website. You can walk through there. It, it, entrance is free. You don't have to pay. And you can just walk for quite a while. It's just beautiful. You get a wind. Yes, the wind. Now back there is, uh, that's on the other side, there's a rifle range. And so you hear shots every once in a while. And also a mobile home park. Uh, it, it's actually more mobile where you can take your RVs and things than where we're panning now. That would be the Olympic Mountains facing west. Now we're going to go a little faster, which is wonderful. We are now on the deck looking down. <coughs> For the friends that don't live here, that's the trees we have in the northwest, and lots of them. It's windy there on any given day. Sometimes when there is two or well, three or four of us, we will go and um, film, uh, uh, stand in a pyramid. You can actually feel the vibration of Mount Rainier sometimes. The other thing happens when you go there. Time Too stops. Much. There's a... There he was, and there he went. Uh, that's a hawk. There are many hawks. And here's a flower, and sometimes you actually really have to look down on the ground to locate some of the plant life. Like I said, every mound has different vegetation. That's one of the things that fascinates me personally. And I would think that was filmed, I would think maybe, um, hmm, I don't know what time of the year it was. It, it might even be a combination of time. Highly recommend it. In, in reference to most mounds, giants are mentioned. Not at the Mima Mounds. They talk about giant gophers. Boy, I guess in a way that is a giant something. And um, I never did figure that out, why they do that. 
a day, meaning um, people are trying to find know stuff. From what I understand, there's lots of theories and uh, just fun stuff. Just fun stuff. Yeah. If you're wondering what that little arrow is on the bottom, this one right there. Um, I have discovered DVD and how to freeze some of these awful shots I used to show you. So there you go, you see? You see that little arrow? I'm getting ready to do something. So I was really excited uh, to go forward in my evolution of technology. And look at there, one little arrow. I had no clue that that arrow was going to be on there. No dogs. No shooting. They do enough of that from the rifle range on the other end of the mounds. And there you can volunteer to help if you like. Now that's outside of the mounds. Uh, if you stay on that road, that takes you to um, the Lucky Eagle Casino on the back road. <coughs> From what I understand, since that has been filmed, everything is all finished and um, it all got restored and it's back to where they wanted it to be. Look at there, no clouds. I think that's amazing. That's a little bit of beauty of Washington State. That's that road I was talking about. And if you make a left turn, that takes you to Little Rock and Rochester. And that's the end of the clip, and I hope you enjoyed my mounts. There you go. Um, normally, I go to the Southwest and spend time with the Native Americans there, but to refresh your memory, I used to go to the East Coast quite often. Not sort of east, not all the way east. There's a young woman here named Miss Lynn Marie, and she, uh, she co-authored the update for my book and the moral of the story is, that by the way is um, for free download on, the, um, on my webpage. So anyway, so I met Lynn Marie, and when I'm in the sort of Midwest to, say, Illinois, from Illinois uh, to the East, Lynn always comes and spends time with me. Uh, like I said, we do ride together sometimes. In one year, we were all together at the Cahokia Mounds. And so the next person that is going to tell you some things is uh, Lynn Marie. And uh, she filmed a lot of that in 50 mile an hour winds. So again, you're going to hear the wind. And I'll talk over her sometimes because you're not going to be able to hear some of it. So I'm not sure, but I think the next place we're going is to the Cahokia Mounds. They are like just a few miles from downtown uh, St. Louis. And uh, so maybe we'll go there. Here we go. That is, right, that is directly across from the Cahokias at Woodhedge in St. Louis. And uh, there we go. We'll take you to the Cahokias. These mounts are a little different than, than the Weimar mounts because oh, they were, no, I they were, it's very hard to hear her because of the tremendous amount of wind. Uh, she's just explaining basically what I told you. She was very brave. She had a very hard time not only keeping the camera uh, in one place, she had her little son with her and he almost blew away a couple of times. And way in the back there, that's the Ark, uh, St. Louis Ark. 
Now it's a state park. It's still used for farm. I grass and I just thought I'd shoot it. Right? Look at how wavy and beautiful that grass. Um, on top of one of the little smaller hills. Isn't that just beautiful? Crystal grid. I got four crystals. Lemurian quartz, two quartz. Uh, one's a gal crystal. And I'm actually going to turn the camera off so I can say a little ceremony to the crystals. And it's anchor and some light. So I could say a little ceremony to the crystals. Yeah, Chada would be land. Anchor and some light. The grass where I um, seeded the crystal energy for full sport. Um, a little closer look at the crystal layout. Oh, can I get a shadow in there? I cannot tell you what she said. Now I'm going to try to get a little closer to the mound. So she's going to get closer. What she did, she okay. took that crystal and planted it in the earth there. And there it is. She lost it. She had a really hard time finding it, but she did eventually recover her crystals. There's a little guy. Look at him go. It's, uh, it was so windy. Huh? See it so they'll get away from us or not, but I know one of them is. Listen to the wind. Got away from us, I believe. Look at it go, look at it go. <laughs> Not good. There we go. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm just gonna talk right through that. Uh, not only was it windy, I, I think somewhere along the line we pushed the wrong button, which brings me to solar flares. Went to the doctor here a couple of days ago, and we were making reference to, um, it's just going too fast. We're going to get real dizzy here. Cool. <laughs> just too fast. We can't go like that. Cool. Uh, went to the doctor, and he was talking about uh, how, uh, not just my doctor, that there were several physicians, and how, how we're struggling with the solar flares and all the other things connected with it. Um, so while we repair in this clip, uh, I want to remind you again that um, this show airs again on Friday at 11 o'clock in Olympia, Washington. Uh, some of the other places you have to, to check with, um, with the stations because some of the stations have changed their time. and. Um, so, I don't know. Are we ready for, for the new clip? Oh, cool. We fixed it. The crew is just wonderful. I guess we fixed it. So, we'll just keep going here. Yeah, no. I don't think I say thank you often enough, do I? Cool. Where were we? At the back of the Cahokia Mounds, that's where we are. And uh, that was in November, I believe. It had snowed a few days earlier. And then it got like 70 degrees or something like that. And uh, people lost electricity. It was in November because at the hotel, when the power came on, it showed us the uh, ground zero where they, ha where they had erected the, um, 
<coughs> excuse me, the beams for the uh, for the trade center. I'm gonna try to get a little closer to the mound. No. Maybe we'll just forget that whole thing and and go to the next right club. There. We're not gonna do it like that. It's solar flares. I. It, it just please don't call me at six in the morning because I don't know what to tell you. If you go ahead and um, go to my webpage, and it'll take you directly to NASA, and they have a lot of explanation uh, for some of the flares, so even the ones that they were lo wasn't looking for. Now there is no reason to believe that 2005 is going to get any easier, and um, so our body just has to learn how to flow with it. Now. Let's see. I'm not really sure where we are at this moment. I think the next clip, in the next clip, Lynn is taking us to Moundsville, Alabama. And that's the place she was born. And um, she's going to document that by herself. Again, it is windy. And we want to give you a real TV like always. And. Uh, so you can go right along with Lynn Marie in uh, Moundsville, Alabama, and then we're going to go back to uh, to the Cahokia Mounts with a couple of other friends that you recognize. So, so as soon as we fix that clip, what do you think that is behind me? That'll be the question for next week, I think. Hmm. We were in a long conversation about not parallel universes. What, what did you call it? What kind of universe? Um, a unified field. A unified? Unified fields. Uh, unified fields, fields in this universe. universe. The disappearing mm -hmm. of the unified. The, dis <coughs> uh, the book called Disappearing Universes. Disappearing Universes. Well, just so you know, that's not what it is. <laughs> so that's one down. <laughs> okay. Here we are, Alabama, Mountsville, Alabama, and uh, she will take you right along here. Cahokia Mounts that we saw earlier, and uh, the mound sites began in Minnesota and wind along the river all the way down to Florida. Mountsville is the second largest mound site in the United States. Cahokia is the largest. This area is also the area where my Cherokee ancestors settled along the Warrior and the Cahaba rivers. They were farmers and they made furniture out of willow trees. Hardworking people. So we're going to start this section all about the mounds in Moundsville, Alabama. And this site flourished between 1000 and 1580. And we're standing on top of the mounds and we can show you some of the sites. That's a little guy, Davin. He uh, he has to go everywhere we go, so sometimes he's just not happy. He, he's actually he's a little indigo that we talk about all the time. <coughs> there are similarities. Uh, I found Davin at the mound. He's not too impressed, but he's awfully hungry. And there's Rochelle, quickly getting him a bottle. Let's watch the efficiency. This ancient witch world was once repeated 1,500 years ago when mothers nursed their babies around the mound. And what's that? Is that Bigfoot or is that my cousin, Alicia? again comes to the mound in the form of daily activities, mundane rituals that carry on a supernatural spiritual significance. When babies are given their bottles and all the world is happy that peace again.
it's it's very hard to zero in on things like that because especially with digital cameras, of course you bring the this shake This is the platform mound. The whole city of Moundsville was built around this 100 area platform, and the whole city was um, surrounded by a wooden stockade fence like Cahokia. Surrounding the city also are burial mounds. And there's more than 3,000 burials found. Um, the rulers were buried with uh, elaborate artifacts, um, breastplates, discs, paint, um, jewelry, and sometimes um, people are sacrificed and buried in the mounds with the rulers. Those sounds are not special effects. That's what you actually got. So peaceful. Just like at the Maima months, you can't really see the vegetation unless you get really, really, uh, you know, close to it. Because some of the, the flowers are just so small. Go to the to the sites of the Native Americans, the Chickasaws, Choctaws. You see the similarities in the houses there. And the cultural centers are very forthcoming. believe that life is eternal and similar to the pyramids they believe that being buried inside the mound would guarantee you eternal life and um, they also believe that life is in harmony and life is in cycles so the mounds were built to make harmony on earth and that they would strive to keep that harmony through their religion but eventually human nature got them and greed and economic decline caused the mound society to fall and now it's so mysterious because nothing was written or preserved to tell us about the mound people. So we rely more on our intuitive impressions of what the archaeologists are digging up to tell us about the mound. There she is. Spot. You can hear the birds chirping and the crickets. It's a very wooded area. 
Um, Alabama has a very diverse geography in that way. Um, each part of the state is different than the rest. Whereas Illinois is flat, now it's flooded so it's underwater. When I was actually at uh, Cahokia for the first time visiting, um, I did a ceremony at Lake Crystals around the mountains and I said a blessing to have the ancient wisdom come through to me. And I lost one of my crystals. And I was frantically searching and looking for the crystal and I just started to cry and I felt really sad and I couldn't figure out why. And when I found the crystal, I started having um, flashes of having a past life living at one of the Moundsville societies, or at the Mound Society, rather. And so now I'm taking this journey to the Mounds. I'm carrying the wisdom and those memories with me. And one of the strongest memories I have of, was being placed inside of a mound and being laid on a table with a burial sheet wrapped around me. And I slept there overnight. And the idea was coming into age was facing your fear of death and your fear of life. And once you got over that fear, you would mature. Well, while I was laying there, I got so scared a part of me floated off. And I didn't remember that and bring that piece together until I visited Cahokia. Now I'm visiting these mounds and everything is coming together, the past, present, and future. And it reminds me of a phrase Lillian wrote in my book. When she autographed the book she gave me, she said, the past, present, and future is often the same. Enjoy all three. And now I'm doing that and I'm sharing the mounds with my cousin, Alicia and Rochelle, my baby and Martin. And you're going to see footage of them when they get over being camera shy. We don't know what the noises are. We didn't add them and uh, it's amazing how sometimes we can say something and it has an impact on people long term. At Moundsville, these long cuts with thatched trowel roofs are what I remember, um, except the ones I saw were longer and Many families lived in here, grandmothers, um, children, multi-generational families, all lived in one hut, and everybody contributed to the other as a community. Um, it's not like you just go to the store and buy food for yourself when you hunt or um, get some food from the woods, you share with the village so everybody has enough to eat. Is helping. These are the burial ceremonies at Moundsville. It's, it's catching when you it's draw. 97 everybody. degrees in here, and it feels more like we're in a sauna than in a hut. When you draw everybody into your work, it's very contagious. Um, the Moundsville burials often include a personal belongings and offerings of food and drink. The dead, are buried, the dead were buried me. near the home in a cemetery area. The Moundsville Indians built two burial mounds, and there are over 3,000 human remains found here. The Cahokia Mounds are much, much larger. Um, there's remains being found in areas around St. Louis, and actually St. Louis is built on some of the mounds and the grave sites. People are just all connected. Seems like. Okay. Yeah. The Moundville Indian utilized turtles, fish, and mussels found in the Black Warrior River. Using traps and nets to catch fresh food from the river, they had a varied and well balanced diet. Mm. I used to live in Louisiana. We had, we had a different accent there, too. I had a pressure rubber. Yeah, a pressure rubber. Yes, I did. You can always rewind it. I don't think they realized this. Vegetable fiber, yellow fiber, as well as reeds from the river, was woven into various items. Mats, baskets, traps, and some articles of clothing. Animal skins were made into leather clothing for the cooler months. Antler was used for tools. I don't think anybody recognized the side noises or the um, what you know the sounds until we looked at the film. 
it's not surprising to be on a site like that to have extras. No. This is my cousin Alicia and this is my cousin Rochelle. What do you think about Moundsville and the Mound and the area, Alicia? I think it's really, Ooh. I think it's really, really cool and fun. <laughs> Well, this is the Black Warrior River, and this is where the Indians used to hunt and fish at for their food. And I think it's a great um place to um. There goes seven. <laughs> now you said one of the mounds was vandalized. Yes, um, people came and tore it up. What do you think about people vandalizing um, these mounds? They shouldn't do it. It should be a place where they can come one day and have a picnic in the area. If you could say anything to the people who vandalize the mounds if they're watching, what would you tell them? Shame I on you. I ask them why would they want to do this, this to a special park that is wonderful. And if it's... Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> How about you, Alicia? What do you think of the mounds? Oh, oh, I think it's a very, very wonderful place. What do you think? Relax and stuff. What do you think it would be like to live here long ago? Not really cool. You wouldn't only have to clean your room, you'd have to hunt for your food and skin your hides and make your clothes too. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you guys want to say? Hello, America. Goodbye, America. Goodbye, America. Goodbye, America. Goodbye, America. There he is. He has a sister now. Daddy. So he has to be Daddy. responsible. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. That's it. Where's the wisdom for me? <laughs> Off he goes. But he hangs in there. We haul him all over the place sometimes. <laughs> uh. The sign at um, Moundsville, you can see it's cracked and damaged. This is um, how people are vandalizing our parks. And even some of our sacred sites, people are vandalizing. And these people should be careful and honor and respect these sites because once they're gone, they're gone forever. They can never be rebuilt or recreated. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you know what to do with that now. We're going to keep going here, I think. Bye-bye. Right, right to the next place. Uh, well, he's much older now. And uh, we are now back at the uh, Cahokia Mounds. That's Monica Ryan Smith. And... Uh, the late Electra Ann, uh, she left us in, not Monica, Electra Ann in 2004. Here she's showing off my walking stick. There's a woman carving walking sticks. That's a lecture. She was 86 at the time. And it is being um, uh, gratefully accepted by the um, agreement that we have made today that each one. Off we go to the wood inch. That's across from the from the mounds, the way we found it. We was of course camp trails. We was driving down the street and um, because we realized this is three miles from where I went to the um, crop circles in 1997. Uh, 110 crop circles within three miles from there. And that'll recover. I'm sure of it. That's also a windy day. It was so windy, nobody wanted to show up. And 
Now that noise is me walking while I'm filming. Uh, is this a purse or a bag or something? I can. Here you go. Here's the wind. Like I said, we had horrendous winds that day. Then this would be uh, Electra at Woodhenge uh, putting her crystal or something in the ground. Okay, I'm getting, I can, oh my, that's a big one. Can I take a picture of it? We'll just hold it up, yeah. Those it's are the famous big. magnetic lodestones yeah, from. Uh, Magnet Grove, Arkansas. Would you like to explain the, the, the stone? It's, uh, this is a lodestone, a magnet stone, that is very unique to the planet to place in the ground. And we give thanks. Woodhenge. Woodhenge Head. reconstructs the calendar built here by the Mississippian Indians about 1080. The original circle was 410 feet in diameter and had 48 cedar posts. 40 of these have been reconstructed in their original positions. Red ochre and iron clay oxide found in excavations suggest the posts were painted red. The function of all posts is not known, but three were used to mark the equinoxes in the summer and winter solstices if observed from the center post. Now that pinging noise uh, seems to be present at all sites. And we, uh, we spoke to Dennis Valtese, one of the Giza uh, when the people that worked at Giza, and they found that that pinging was in conjunction with that at the pyramids. It's the same noise. So this is Woodhenge here. That's the noise I'm making reference to. I got orbs, I got orbs, I got orbs, I got orbs. <laughs> of course, we hadn't done the orb documentary by then, and very few people know what that was, but they were visible f uh, with the naked eye. It was a cold day, too. I talked to a man, he lives in Colorado. He, he had seen this footage, and he said he used to work there. He used to drive by there every day and didn't know it was there. I'm gonna walk that circle, so I'm gonna pick her up. Oh, I don't have enough minutes left, but I will pick her up. Now look at this woman walking. She's 85. 85, 86. Wait a minute, she was born in 1917. Yeah, 86 on Monday, a week from this, I mean, this coming Monday, she'll be 86. We, mm -hmm, you'll celebrate her birthday, and you know, this is the same electron that we said uh, she had sent the on once because she couldn't travel anymore. <laughs> she was too old, she couldn't travel anymore now. <laughs> Look at her. Look at her go. I can't keep up with her, not then and not now and not ever. I will pick her up at certain angles for this. There's 40 of these. 40, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There were, the original was 48. Since then, I'm she had hiked sure Australia. Central Australia. 
One day she said, we said, you want to go to Austin? And she said, no. Well, it's about the half point for her. I'm going on a mission. She's half around it. No, I'm sorry. She said she was going on assignment. <laughs> and she left us. That concludes Electro's Walk of the Wood. <laughs> yeah, there she goes. It was pretty awesome, actually. Um, when, when you go back into old footage and, and look at the people and the things, and it makes you think how you have uh, spiritually advanced by then. At that time, uh, I, I saw orbs, of course, I didn't understand what orbs were, and I, but I, you could hear, I got really excited. And Lynn, she has two babies now instead of just one, and, uh, and so our life, you know, we just continue to grow, and each time when we learn something, we get excited, and of course, we want to share it uh, with everybody, and then sometimes we have to make a decision, what do I cut out of the film, what do we not, because it's all, all really kind of important. So the next place we're going, so I can quit running my mouth here. Lisa Bilski went to England uh, in January of 2005, and she was nice enough to uh, go to Wood, uh, excuse me, go to Stonehenge for us, and she took some pictures there. Now I do have a friend that lives very close to there, except um, I can never get her to go down there and actually walk, um, walk a stone hedge. It's a little different when you see the photographs, you know, and uh, different aspects of it, but actually to walk it. Uh, the real, here again, like real life, like real time. So Lisa was nice enough to do that for us. Again, it's windy and some of the things that she says she can hear, but that's okay anyway. And Lisa will come back with more uh, footage and pictures at another time off to Stonehenge with Lisa Belsky in 2005. So here we go. I like the way they swing me out there and I'm just like, gone. Here we go. We're right now in the parking lot before we get into Stonehenge. Lovely, lovely countryside here. There are other places to visit here. Take a look at that. You'll see there are very many old sites. Just north of Stonehenge is Woodhead, a Neolithic ceremonial monument. Froze that there for you so you can see where everything is. This north is where ruins the Norman Church in Neolithic artwork in the old 14th century chapel just to the west. The you have to go visit the You can see the trail. The trail. The people are taking a walk up there. Yeah, again, like I said, it's very hard to pull something in because it's. Yeah. Very like vegetable street, no matter what you do. Yeah, froze it for your phone. Come on, man. But it, it, it's, it's just natural. So for the friends that sent me footage, don't worry too much about that. That well, just can't be helped. We had taken you to the droid monuments in Europe, if you remember. I want to show you. Yeah. Claudia show did. Me. I don't know what they're doing. They're either putting money in it or they're rubbing it for good luck. I don't know. He would wait in line. Pay to get in. Sunday afternoon about 3 This is the tunnel that we're going to go under. This is 
you look at the very end, it's pretty good for painting. Lisa, it's very soft spoken to begin with. Okay, we're coming out of the tunnel, and there we are. <laughs> so if we don't understand that, that's okay too. Just enjoy working with our stone hand. Now all around Stonehenge is a burrow, like a ditch. <laughs> yeah, get it closer. There's a crow on top, guarding. It was windy there too, okay. but this time it, you're in England, it's lucky that you can see anything. Because it's so foggy all the time. I was reading Miriam Makeba's autobiography the other day, and she described her first visit to England almost identical to mine. It was so cold, and she's trying to get that bird for you, but you couldn't do it. Poor guy, so shaking all over the place. He called the station stone. The station the stone. Is tiny. This is on the west side and directly on the other side. Parallel to the stone is another station stone. Just a busy place. Again, we are on the west side. Psychics will uh, get close to something like that, and what you've been told and what you notice or feel yeah, is not even close. The so I wonder what they're going to say about us in a thousand years. But we need to stay on. If we survive as a species, that is. On film, it looks so much different than I had seen it on postcards. So I did appreciate her doing this for us. In the other thing. And like I said, my friend in London, um, she never gets to go over there. So we talk about it on the phone. And I say, come on, send me some footage. And she said, OK. I want to show you. So it's getting late in the day. The sun is starting to set. I think you've just changed to And it is cold. But thank goodness it's not raining. Sorry. It's supposed to be sad too. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna head on out. Yeah. To my next stop. Yeah. Next week, uh where am I? Oh, here I am. Next week, uh, uh, we're going to go to Amsterdam, uh, London, Amsterdam, Rome with Lisa, and then we're going to take you shopping in Mexico <coughs> when we get back from there. And then uh, we'll get back to some philosophical shows after a while. Now, our closing shop today is funny, too. Um, so actually, you'll have two riddles today because I'm not going to tell you what it is. So we'll have a price. Well, we can't do lottery, so. But anyway, we will cheer you on, whether you recognize what the first riddle was or what's in the last one was. I forgot we had that uh, closing shot. And I like details, please. <laughs> and so I hope you kind of enjoyed this revisiting of several years of mounds that we had taken you to. Like I said, we had it in reference to other shows and other backgrounds and uh, sometimes just to hook it together like that and reminisce is kind of fun. 
as soon as you go somewhere or take pictures, uh, sometimes I can loan you a camera and take footage and uh, you'd be surprised that even if you know, you think no one is interested in what you really want to do, we are interested, uh, bring the footage, uh, real TV, we can do all kinds of things. And uh, I'm, again, I'm really glad that you enjoyed the herd of turtles as much as you did. So today, and then one more travel show uh, next week, and then we're going to get back to our regular format because I have to go back on the road and um, get some more footage for everybody. I have a wonderful crew. They're rolling with the punches. Um, <coughs> one of my camera people resurfaced after a long time, and he was actually in Kimberling City. At the same time, I was visiting. I hear music. Uh, closing shot, think of the, um, um, try to tell me what's, uh, what's in the closing shot, and we will cheer you on, because um, that'll be kind of interesting too. So between this one and the other one, uh, I want to know what it is. Yeah, are we going to have the, uh, we're going we gonna to have it, and how cool. we see you next week, and uh, God bless, I think. I'm done. I'm just done. I'm having fun today. I'm just done. <laughs> Boy. <laughs>